This is a teaching message from Church of the Living Water of Austin.
Amen. Gotta deal with it. Again, like I said before, most people have no problem with getting or taking yeah. or receiving. Right. But when it comes to giving, they have a problem with giving. Amen. You cannot be a person that God's going to use if you don't have a giving heart. Yes. You Amen. have to be a giving heart, a giver. Now, when you all hear giving, everybody and people that might hear this, when you hear giving, the first thing people think about is money. Yes. Yes. That's a part of it. That's not everything. No. Yeah. It's more to giving than just money. Mm -hmm. You should have been selling this thing with money. Yeah. You, you, that, that, you know, you have to go beyond that in giving. Are you following? Yeah. Well, when something is required of us, we have to give it out. And God said, this is what I'm requiring. Yes. Oh. And somebody said, okay, we're going to do this. And, oh, like, oh, let, well, let's just, let's just bring it home. They said, Okay, well, we're going to have a meeting. Oh, we're going to talk about pastor's conversation. Oh, uh, wow, why don't we have it? Well, we, well, that's just the way you did with your following, Pastor. You're doing the same thing. You're driving down that same road. You're just doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing. Yeah, you were going to change September September 1st, 2018, but see, now it's 2020. And you're going to last new long. Come on, man. And you're like, oh, wow. Well, look, she got on shiny shoes. She don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I'll be dropping something different real soon. And what does that have to do with you? What does it have to do with you? With whatever anybody has, you still have to have a giving heart. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And you got to give what God requires you to give. Yeah. You can't yeah. okay, well, I'm going to go down there, go downtown and give to the homeless. Then that's fine and good. God still ain't going to release you from that, what he told you right. to give. Yeah. No, he's like, you're yeah, good. Now you're double enough. That's good. Yeah. Go down there and still come back and do what I told yeah. you to do. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Don't get caught up in what you think somebody has or what right. you think somebody That's doing right. or any of that. Amen. You will never be a giver, whether it's money, whether it's time, whether That's it's commitment, right. whatever yeah. it is. You will not. And let me tell you, if you don't give of your resources, you're not going to give of your time. Right. You're not going to give of your, your none, none of that. None of that. All of that plays a part in everything. Yes, it does. And one time giving is not giving. Yes. I did it. <laughs> Selfishness. You know what? And I believe and I believe this with all my heart. I believe the reason why my family's blessed, mm -hmm. why I'm blessed, because I am a giver. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm almost a giver to a fault. Amen. Almost to a fault. I am a giver. Amen. I don't try to, to try to, and I don't care who you are. I don't, you know, but they don't need it. See, I don't give. I don't give because That's I right. think no, some person no, have no, no. If God tells me to give to somebody that yeah. have a need, I do that. But if God tells me to give to somebody that don't have a need, I'm gonna do that too. Yeah. Because it's not about what they have, I don't have. Amen. I don't say, oh, okay, I see the marks. You know what? Uh, you know what? What does that have to do with Nothing. anything? That's right. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing yeah. at all. Amen. What Brother Ace needs though, what he's not going to say, okay. Yes. What does that have to do with anything? If God told you to give, whether yes. it was monetary, whether it was time, whether he told you to pray, or whatever. Well, I know they don't need no prayer. They ministers. They yes. know what you, You're all out of heart. But that's, that's, right. that's what you are saying. Yes. You don't want to give your time, you don't want to give your prayers, you don't want to give your resources, you don't want to, you don't want to volunteer, you don't want to do any of that. You just want to jump in. Mm -hmm. Not in. Amen. Oh, that's, we, we got to get away from that. We can get away from that. Listen, listen to me, so you know. Because it's for me, and it's for you, and it's for me. There is always a reason not to give. Yeah. Yeah. That will always, always be a reason. Always. So you're not exempt. You will find a reason not to give. Yeah. I can't be because you're going to find a reason not to give. Yeah. And guess what? When God has commanded you, let me tell you, it was there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this guy I was talking to, I'm never going to get them with this series. But anyway, <laughs> this guy I was talking to, I got to minister to. I love ministering Amen. to people. It's just a blessing. And so they were just asking me about something. I hope they get to see this. 
and he was asking me about that, and he was saying his mother was doing it. He said, you know, sometimes my mother asked me for money and stuff, and I know she got the tithe, because she believed in tithing and stuff, and he didn't necessarily go to church and everything. He said, so tell me this. So how does that, how does that work, you know? Do I, do, do, do I really have to tithe, or do I have to? I said, oh. Then I had to break it down. Then I had to go through all of the deal. But it was a blessing to me. But then he said, oh my God, now I understand. He said, okay, okay, tell me like this, because I know God doesn't expect it. He said, so what if, what if you have money and your car break down mm -hmm. the same time you have your money? And all you, you brought your car break down, you got $20. Now you know what the time is on $20. Yeah. $20. Yeah. I don't think it's that either. But she said, in which you have twenty dollars, and that, and you need that. It, just say I that I have to have gas, and I don't have no gas. Wait, he said, now do I give back to God? God didn't expect me to give back. I can't. I can't. I need gas. I said, God help. <laughs> I said, I guarantee you, the week before you had it. Yeah. He just started laughing. I said, now, now you want to take God, borrow God's money because you blew it last Friday. You had more than 20, but you blew it on that. Now that you only have 20, you said, God wouldn't expect me to do that. I said, no, you could. He said, you are so right. You are so right. I said, because it's always there, but you can't see it if you spent it. And now, when it comes out for you two times, die, you be like, God doesn't expect it. God said, no. I said, you know what that's called? It's called being a bad steward. That's right. And once you're a bad steward, you'll never see it. That's right. Amen. If you are a bad steward, you will never see how it works. Right. You won't tithe. You will not. Or you do it sparingly. Guess what? If you tithe sparingly every now and then, that's not a tithe. Yeah. Amen. That's not a tithe. He said, oh, he, he just thought, he just, I mean, he just literally bust out laughing. He said, oh my God, that's so, that's so true. Yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. I'm like, yeah, so what do you have to do? I said, walk and bring your tithe. I said, I know, I said, walk and bring your tithe. I said, because I, I had already taught him, I said, you don't pay tithe. I said, because it belongs to God. That's you right. didn't bring what belongs to you. So I said, did you pay your tithe? You didn't, you don't think you're paying God nothing. That's right. Because he could have easily took the 90 and told you to live off the 10. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he he said, all I want is one dime on a dollar. Lord and see, it's okay when it's five dollars. Yeah. It's okay when it's ten dollars. But it's when you start getting five thousand dollars. And then that dime just keeps adding up. It's like, well, wait a minute. See, it sounds real good because that's really all it is. But it's that's supposed to God said, now the hundred percent. Now, I'm not even teaching on this, but you got me off a subject. But anyway, I'm going to stay here. But Russell, suppose that God gave you, I mean, the 100% belongs to him. You know that, right? Because he's the one that gave you the power to gain the wealth within the 100%. That's right. If you wouldn't, you never did. You couldn't be where you can't even work to make it. So the 100 right. is here. Now, supposing he said, now bring me the 90, mm -hmm. and I want you to live on the 10. Mm -hmm. I want you to live a dime on the dollar and give me the 90. Right. Like, oh, well, that sounds good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until the start getting up in there. Yes. See, when somebody gives you twenty thousand dollars and you mm -hmm. have to tie it off of that, a dime, just a dime on the dollar. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what made me happy. See, you did need to start doing that. But let me tell you, let me tell you, everything belongs to him. Yes, it does. Amen. God, now, now see, this is what we miss it. We get so hooked on the tide that we don't look at everything. But God did not only tell us to bring his 10%, his, 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 his tide, but he said, now, after that, I want you to be a good steward over the night. Yeah, that's right. So you can see the blessings. That's right. Yeah. So you never get to see the blessings of the night right. because you're bad steward. Uh -huh. And you keep blaming God. And you that's keep right. robbing God and stealing from God. God, and thinking it's God's fault. No, you're a bad steward over the night. Right. Amen. So true. You blow it on this, you blow it on that, you blow it on chips, you blow it on soda, you blow it on. I mean, every, all those earrings are there. Oh, let's go get some chicken. You know, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I don't know the difference. Let's get pop pie, jerk jam, go with the chip. I mean, you just want to do all that. And then it comes down to it. You don't see it That's because right. you spend it in parts and That's you can't right. see it as a big chunk. But at the end of the day, 
is all spent that way. That's right. That's right. That's true. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, we have a person that ate to give. Yes. Because why? Well, I don't have enough. You have more than enough. That's right. right. It's true. You have more than enough. Mm. You got to do, they got to bring me an assignment this Wednesday. They got to tell me, what do I do if I steal or borrow a car sign? You know, yeah, that's a penalty. Yes. Find it in the scriptures if you can. Mm -hmm. but, it, but, but let me tell you, that stuff is in your heart. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you from being a giver. It keeps you from being used by God. And then you look at other people that are tithing, that are giving, that are givers, that are walking in the blessing, and you look at them and get mad and say, they don't need nothing. I ain't giving them that. See, he said, you know, I used to think like that. I would think, I ain't giving that pastor nothing. Look what they brought with. I said, but what does that have to do with you? Yeah. What does that have to do with you? Because, see, you look at other people, but, come, but let me tell you something. A bad steward cannot see how people that are good stewards make it. That's right. right. That's true. Do right. That. Right. Well, you'll never see it. A bad steward cannot see it mm -hmm. because you're not a saver. Yes. If you're not a saver, you'll never know how people can go on vacation and blow money mm -hmm. because they save for it. Right. But you don't see it because you don't do it like that. That's right. So you're like, no, they got to be doing something. Oh, no, it can't be happening like that. Well, you know what? I'm, oh, it's because of what kind of job they have. And let me tell you, I, it's people in here that make money make more money than I did, made more money than my husband mm -hmm. husband did. But I'm going to tell you what, me and my husband could keep up with every one of them. You know why? Not because not because of any money we had, but because I knew how to save. Yes. And I still know how yes. to save. Yes. I know. If you are not a person that know how to save, you will never see it. That's you right. You will never see it. Amen. Never see it. Amen. Then I began to teach him how to start tithing. Mm -hmm. And I showed him how me and my husband started. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you, when we were first young, we wasn't even in ministry. I said, we were undisciplined. I yeah. said, my husband said, get the tithe, get a money order. We need to do a check, we need to get a money order, and fill it out inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't leave it blank, because you fill it out with your own. Let me tell you. <laughs> don't trust your tax. That is so true. Go get up and put your bag truly. Go get <laughs> And I said, we had to start that way. Yes. We had to start, we had to fill it out, I don't care what it was, fill it out, sign it, fill it out, sign it. And it was so much that people didn't want to give us money because they said, they're going to give it to that church. But we had a mindset. Lord. Fill it up, sign it, fill yes. it up, sign it. And to, I said, then we got rid I said, then I would fill it out, sign it, and I get $5. I started with $2, then I went up to $5. I was like, oh, oh this is getting good, because why? And then, that was my offer, because you know, tides add off. Oh, oh, God, you need, we got to get, remember, you, the tenth is not even yours, that's God. So I said, we started with 10, we started with, and, and year after year after year. And so here we are 40 years later, and I don't count my tides. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm oh, I'm going to give over the book. So I don't even I don't even say, okay, down to sometimes I when I used to count the money, I used to laugh at people's um because they would go down to the penny. Make $87.46. You know what? Just And this ain't it really that 30 cents is gonna make that deal with me. But you know, that that's just people. But I don't I don't I don't when I get money, I don't even look at how much is my tithe off of that. Because I know I'm going to go over, so I don't pay attention to any of that. But, but listen, because I don't want you to think you can do that. Mm -hmm. I, I did that. That's a person that's been 40 years in the ministry and serious yes. about the things of God. Yes. And have learned some things on the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do that. Yeah. But I had to get to a point, but I didn't start off that way. Amen. Amen. I didn't Amen. start off that way. And you won't eat, mm -hmm. but you gotta start. That's right. And, the, and get and listen, the money is not about the money for God. It's about obedience. obedience. Yes, ma'am. Because if you think God needs your little tacky money, seriously, <laughs> how did the creator of earth need, need yeah. your twenty dollars, your your right. your five hundred dollars, your whatever you give? What you you really think he needs that? No, he needs your obedience. Amen. So that he can rebuke the devour for your sake. Yeah. So that he can open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing yes. that will supersede yes. your life. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Don't Lord. have nothing to do with money. Let me tell you, he's going to do something for you more than money. Yes. And y'all made me get off the subject and say, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You always have to follow God. Yes. 
even when you're ministering. Yes. Yes. You want to do this, you want to do that. God said, no, you follow me. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And then we said that, again, there's always a reason not to give. You're going to always come up with a reason to hoard and to hold on to, but that's on you. Never allow what is going on in your life to stop you from giving. Mm -hmm. Never. Never allow what's going on in your life to stop you from giving. Oh, I was going to give that, but I can't give it anymore because of this. It doesn't, I don't care if you retire. Let me tell you, do you, act like, do you think God is surprised that you retire? No. When God commanded you to do whatever, when God commanded about the pastor's compensation, when he commanded about anything else that he did, anything, do you think that when you retire or you got laid off, that God was say, oh, I just don't do it now. I didn't know that was going to happen. Let me change it for you. No, he already know if you're gonna get laid off. He already know if you're gonna if you if you gonna your check paycheck is short. He knows about all that, and he doesn't change. Amen. Amen. Never allow what's going on in your life to stop you from giving, because it'll get it'll put that hard thing in that garbage That's in your true. heart, and you'll think it's all right to live like that, and then you'll watch others prosper in front of you. Not because they're not prospering because they give money, they're prospering because of obedience to the word of God, and you're gonna be offended. Yeah. Yes. You're going to be offended. Now let's go to Isaiah 62. Oh, I haven't even got through with that. This is crazy. Let's get back to what we were last dealing with when we were here last year. And that's how we have a heart to restore the law. Listen, before we can be used to restore the law, our hearts have to be prepared. When we talk about the law, we're talking about those who are hurting. We're talking about people that are all around us that are hurting, mm -hmm. and they need to be ministered to. When we talk about the lost, we're talking about people who are hurting. There are people all around us that are looking for answers yes. in this building and outside of this building that are looking for answers. They try just about everything they know to try on the inside. They're still hurting. And they realize that there is something missing in my life. Yes. You realize that this, you know what? I, you know, I love this and I love, but it's something missing in your life. When we talk about the lost, we're talking about people that do evil, but that are not evil. They're just caught up because they're lost. Yes. That's just what they do. When we talk about the lost, we're talking about people who are out of place, people who are not in place. People that are not where they ought to be. And in all of our families and in all of our environments, there are people who are just lost. They're just not in place. In our families, they're just not where they ought to be. It is what it is. I've talked to people, and maybe you talk to people, and they talk about, you know, um, maybe a parent or their upbringing or what was going on with them, you know, or a parent that wasn't in their lives or, or stuff like that. In other words, the parents was lost. The parents was out of place. If the parents weren't in the lost, they was out of place. They was out of position. And you talk to people like that and say, you know, yeah, my father was never around. My mother was never around. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was never around. My grandparents were never around. They, uh, 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 all of them were lost and out of place. Yeah. So how many children do you think that are growing up with that same thing going on? Mm -hmm. They're in those positions. Fathers out of position. Mothers out of position. Parents out of Just people out of position. Some of us in this sanctuary, yeah. when we look at our families, just look back on our families, we can see that it was not a functioning family. Yeah. And not because people weren't there. It was just because people were out of position. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. They were people that was in your but They were just out of position, yes, out of place, wasn't where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And so it caused the family to not function. Mm -hmm. There are people all around us that are just out of position. And we all, we all have children and cousins and nieces and nephews and, and brothers and sisters that are just, I'm telling you, you, you know where they are, but they are out of place. Amen. They're out of position. And you've been out of position so long, you can't even get them back in position. True. When we talk about the lost, we're talking about those who have great value to God, though. They have great value. God loves those who are lost. I know we think God only loves the Christian, but no. God loves those who are lost, yes. who are hurting, 
who are searching, those who are out of position. God loves them. He, that's who he sent his son to die for. And you were once there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We all were once there. That's right. Church restoring the lost begins with salvation. If you and if you're in here today, and, and and let me tell you, if you've been searching and you you know you've been you're hurting and you're caught up with with whatever some activities of the world or whatever it is, I'm telling you that whatever defines evil and you just kind of just got caught up in it, you just out of place. But I want you to know Jesus loves you. Yes. And He wants you for His own. Absolutely. He loves you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want you to know that the key to restoration again. It, to your life, it begins with salvation. It begins with salvation. It begins with a relationship with God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. The first step to restoring our lives is that we must be right with God. Mm -hmm. We must be. Jesus said that, you know, that he came to seek and save the lost. Mm -hmm. Seek and save the lost. That which was lost. But salvation is not Restoration. Salvation puts us in position to mm -hmm. be restored. But salvation is not restoration. It just puts us in position that now we can be restored. Mm -hmm. See, there's many people going to heaven and many people being prepared for heaven and, and, and everlasting life. And they're going to make heaven and everlasting life. But they don't yet have abundant life here. Mm -hmm. They don't have life here. They don't have abundant life here. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have life yeah. and have it more abundantly, not here on earth. They're still dealing with what? Hurts, issues, scars, wounds, just things that have damaged them. And the restoration process is not just that, you know, you can have everlasting life. The restoration life means that you can have the abundant life right here, right now. Amen. Right now. Listen. In this lesson, we're focusing on the heart, and we need to have order to restore the loss. There must be order to restore the law. Now, in Isaiah 62, we know that this is the sermon that, that was being delivered uh, from the Lord through Isaiah, and Isaiah is talking about the restoration of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He's letting the children know that God was going to restore Jerusalem. But he, what, he was letting them know that Jerusalem was going to be restored, but that that was work that the people had to do. And we learned in our last teaching that Jerusalem represents a promise. Did you hear me? God made to, he, he, he made a promise to his people, and that's where Jerusalem comes in. And what Isaiah was letting the children of Israel know was that God was going to restore Jerusalem because he made a promise to the people. When God makes a promise, no, it's coming to pass. Yeah. Whether you see it or not, it's coming to pass. And so restoration is all about, uh, is always a restoration of a promise that God gave. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Yeah. Restoration is always about a promise that God has given. A promise that he's made to his people. That's why God sent Jesus. Why? Because God promised in his word that he would give us a new heart. Yeah. He promised it, a new spirit, and he's done all of that. He's going to fulfill the promise. He yeah. promised that he would restore the relationship that was broken up through the disobedience of Adam. From a, he promised that he was going to restore us back. And he's done just that. Yes. He's always going to fulfill a pro the promise Amen. that he makes. Amen? Amen? So the same way that God restored Jerusalem, it gives us insight into what he ha has to happen in restoration. He has to restore. Restoration has to take place. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's promised. Yes. He's promised that if you are lost, that he will save you. Amen. He promised it. Amen. So in verse 8 it says, are you there? 62. It says, the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. Mm -hmm. And thy son, uh, and, the, and the, the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the, that for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through 
Go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the Lord of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Now, four things that God said here, we said it on last time. He instructed the people to, to uh, what he wanted them to do, and he told them what? He told them, first, go through the gates. Second, he said, cast up the highway. Third, he said, gather out the stones. Fourth, he said, lift up a standard. So we learned if I'm going to have a heart to restore the lost, I must prepare to go through the gates. And we learned that the gates are like a meeting place. That was in the last teaching. In Jerusalem, there's 12 gates to the city, mm -hmm. and those gates represent a meeting place. It was a meeting place for those who dwell, dwell between those that dwell in the city and those that dwell outside of the city. So they would all come to the gate and, and meet, and they would do different things outside the wall, because those that were outside of the city couldn't come in. But those that was inside of the city could go out. But they couldn't come in. So they would meet at the gate and they'd have everything laid out. It was a meeting place between, again, those, listen, who had the promise and those that didn't have the promise. It's key. It was a meeting place, commerce, and, and uh, a meeting place for exchange. That's where everything was happening. People would come there and they'd buy and sell, but they were outside of the gate of the city, and the people in the city would come there and meet. They would exchange ideas and talk and do things like that. But it was also a place where people came together to do all other sorts of things as well. It was a meeting place. Yeah. So if there's going to be restoration, you're going to have to go through the gates. In other words, you're going to have to go through the meeting place and that's, what's rep that's where it begins to represent us. We got to go through. See, all of us in here, we got the blessings. We, yeah, we, yeah. We're with the Lord, those yeah. that are with the Lord. Yeah. But God said, I'm calling you to go outside of this. Mm -hmm. Outside of this. And, then, and he's not only talking about outside to the sinner. He's telling us also how to get outside of ourselves. Yeah. Got to get outside of that. You know why we have to get outside of ourselves? Because many of us have already built private little cities and private little walls that we won't let nobody in. Amen. Just certain people. We have certain people that can come through the wall. Other people don't. We set up everything around us nice and comfortable. We like nice and comfortable. Very nice and comfortable way. We have friends that we want in. Some friends no, some friends yes. We have the church we want to go to. I don't just go, I, you know, I go and I check out the church first. I want to see it this week. But no, you have to be set the body as God sees the spirit. Because let me tell you, I'm going to tell you now, if you like this message today and you love me there, everybody comes in loving me until I start teaching. <laughs> then the problem comes. Everybody loves, oh, yeah, yeah, you love me now. But uh, and, and, and just like I told someone else, I don't care what kind of money you put in this church. Yeah. I don't care what you do in this church or don't do in this church. It'll never, ever, I'll never, yes. ever compromise yes. the word. I'm following Pastor Lord, yes. and I won't either. Yes. And none of these other ministers will either. Amen. So it doesn't matter. If we are not impressed by money. Don't get it, don't get it twisted Amen. at all. Right. I don't care what you put in there. You get, you know, let me tell you, you get no extra nothing because you I put ten thousand. Amen. And the church will use it, but you still sit your tail in that chair. Amen. And you're going to get true. Exactly. We're not. That doesn't. Yes, see, right. see, people that are desperate, they'll, they'll change the words to keep you no. sitting in that chair. Yeah. But guess yes. what? Just the way your leg brought you behind yes. in, you you right on out. Because we're not going to compromise Amen. God's Amen. word for anyone no right. and anything at any time. Absolutely. So if you thought that, put the money back in your pocket if that's what you were going to do. Now if you want to give it, just give it, but know that that, that remains the same. Yes. Put it back in your pocket and say, well, now I ain't going to give because if I know I'm not going to get no good. No, you're not. Amen. So ain't no sense if you wasted my time and I won't waste yours Amen. and you won't waste mine. Amen. Amen. Because God's word stands true the Lord. forever. Yes, it does. Amen. Forever. Yes. Are you with me? I'm out of time, and this is bad because I got a whole lot of information. But you know what? It's always great because I love that for Sunday evening because that's yeah. when we have our best fun, right? That's when you get all the new information. But I can't believe I'm out of time. Oh, I know what it is. 
do that tithing thing with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was about to get with that. God's like, nope. You did just what I wanted you to do. Amen. See, you never know how God works. You can't do your own thing. And see, most of the time we be like, well, I got to stick to the note. I got to stick to the note. Well, my pastor got me from that. Just, let me just stick to the note. Stop trying to get to everything. Let me tell you, there's always another Sunday. Amen. There's always another day. Amen. There's always tonight. Yes. Take your time. He said the most important thing is that people get it, not that they hurt. Yes. That they get it. I don't care if you have to keep repeating. Go back over it again. Amen. I don't care if they look like they got it. Do it again. Mm -hmm. If they say they got it, do it again. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the way he was. He was, yeah. And you all didn't never, you all could never get it how he would go over the same thing. Because yes. yes. he yeah. knew people. And he knew he no, they act like they got it because it sounded good. Yeah. <laughs> you act like you got it, but no, no, no. But we still got tonight. Amen. And we still got another Sunday. Yes. And we still got another Sunday. Because my, the most, most important thing is that you get Amen. what God is saying. Yeah. Not that you just hear it. Mm -hmm. Not that I'll be a certain place at a certain time. Because me setting this pastor here, I could go on longer if yes. I wanted to. Yeah. It's my prerogative. Amen. I could do that if I want to, and nobody in here would say nothing. No, no. You'd probably be tired, but you wouldn't say nothing <laughs> if I wanted to. But I would, well, why would I do that? Mm -hmm. Because it's not about me that's going long mm -hmm. and getting it. It's about you understanding mm -hmm. and you getting what we're saying. So I think you got enough. I see some of you regurgitating now. So you know, I, mean, I, I understand that. Put, sip it back in and swallow it. You, got, you can't keep it in your mouth. See, you know, no, I'm not swallowing it. You gotta let it get down in your heart. I see some of your faces are looking full because you don't want to swallow it. Swallow it. I'm telling you, it's the truth. It's the truth. Let me see. No, swallow it. Swallow it. You want to get out of Don't do it. Swallow it. Amen. 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 It's going to make you healthy in the things of God and in the Word of God. Amen. It's going to make you press. Yes. It's going to make you come back tonight. Amen. Find out. I was just about to get into new information. I'm still reviewing. I'm still reviewing. But that's okay. I was blessed. You were blessed. I was blessed. Amen. It makes me want to tie some more. That, that's just a time thing. It made me, you know, we're going to start, we're going to do some teaching on God. When last time we call on God? A while? Any new ministers know? It's coming in. Recently? No. Yeah. Yeah. We might need to do some teaching on that. Gee, I told you. All right. That's that nun giver. See, that's that, <laughs> that, that unseen work that God keeps trying to get out of that. Don't let us start that. See, you start talking about money. I'm a, I'm a miss. That's okay. That is just going to be in your heart. It's going to be in your heart. Amen? That's just This has been a teaching message from Church of the Living Water at Austin. For more information about our ministry, please go to our website at livingwateraustin.net.